guys right there. That looks good. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today we are going to be talking all about one of my favorite tools when it comes to intuitive eating, the hunger scale. If you follow me regularly, you'll probably know that the hunger scale is one of my favorite tools and kind of what it is. But if you don't, don't worry, we're going to go over all of that today, what the hunger scale is and how you can actually start using it. If you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe down there and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me to create more video content for you guys so that you can keep learning about how to live a life of no food rules. Okay, let's get into it. So what the heck is the hunger scale? The hunger scale is a tool to help you find the best times for you to start and stop eating. The tool allows you to feel mentally and physically more comfortable and it improves the way that you fuel and nourish your body. Because honestly, no app, no doctor, no dietitian can ever tell you exactly what your body needs. Only your body can tell you that. I don't care how good the technology is, we will never be spot on. So the hunger scale, it's a scale from one to 10. That's the one that I use. You might see some different ones out there. If you want to grab the one that I use, I'll link below to my five step ultimate guide to food freedom. And I have that hunger scale, the exact one that I use in there. So go ahead and snag that freebie down there. I'll post the link in the description. Okay, so I'm going to actually pull up the hunger scale and we're going to just take a peek at it before we actually start talking about it because I think it's gonna be good for you guys to actually see it. So let's do that. Like I said, the hunger scale is a scale from one to 10. And you can see here, number one is when you are on empty. You might feel ill, it might be difficult to concentrate, you might feel dizzy. Basically, you are tanked at this point. Number two, again, it's pretty low. You are hangry, ravenous. This is when like you just want to eat the first thing that's in sight and you don't really care what it is. And then as we go towards the higher numbers, you see that it gets more towards that fullness side of things. We get to a nine and we might be uncomfortable, bloated, food coma, and 10, you are beyond full, sick feeling and no desire to look at food. So this is really this end of the scale is kind of like post Thanksgiving food coma. So after you start to use this hunger scale, which we're going to go over how to do that, you're going to start understanding those middle numbers in the that, my friends, is where the comfort is. For me, learning how to use the hunger scale was honestly so important. Now it's something that I use and don't even think about. When you start to use the hunger scale, it is a lot of upfront work and remembering to use it, remembering to ask yourself, okay, where am I on the hunger scale? But after you do it, it literally becomes automatic. I never have to really actually put the effort into thinking where I am on the hunger scale. It just happens naturally. I'm going to link to a what I eat in a day video that I think is going to be really helpful for you guys because it shows how I use the hunger scale and how I understand hunger and fullness throughout the day in my everyday life. The one that I'm going to link to is when I went to a Chinese buffet. I think that one really shows you how I kind of just adjusted my intake depending on the hunger and fullness that I felt. So I'm going to link that up there. Be sure to check that out because I think it's a really great visual on the day-to-day -day life of how I use it. Let's get into how to use the hunger scale now that we know what the hunger scale is. So when you first start using the hunger scale, it's totally normal to feel like you actually don't know how to use it because after so long of telling our bodies what they're going to eat, whether we're following diets, whether we're restricting food, our bodies stop giving us hunger cues. It's normal to only feel like you know those two ends of the scale that we went over. So the one end where you are tanked, you're so hungry, and the other end where you're food coma and stuff. The goal after you start to use it more is going to be to inch inward on that scale because like I said, those middle areas is where the comfort is at, but just know that it's totally 180% okay to only feel like you know those extremes right now and to feel like I have no idea what a five feels like totally okay. How I recommend you start using it is to just pick one meal a day. If you guys follow me, you know I am very, very passionate about doing everything in a stepwise process. Don't try to do what I call the social media way of intuitive eating where you try to do everything at once. I tried to do that and for me, it didn't work. It made me feel super overwhelmed. I felt like I was eating all of the things at once and not making those connections that are so important. What I want you to do is just pick one meal to start with. Try to assess yourself on the hunger scale before it and after it. Like I said, it's okay if you look at that scale right now and you're like, I have no idea what these numbers mean. Just 
start. It does not have to be perfect. Just start getting yourself used to what those numbers even are. And then the more you think about them, the more you'll actually start to be able to feel them. It's something that totally takes practice. Pick that one meal. It could be breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever you think is most feasible for you to do this at. Dinner is a pretty common one. It's something that people tend to put a little bit more time into. They sit down for the meal typically. Sometimes that one's easiest to start with because you just have a little bit more mental energy at that point. Ask yourself, okay, where am I at on the hunger scale before the meal and where am I at after it? Tracking these trends is super important. If you find that you are tanked before every single meal, and you leave the meal feeling food coma, ask yourself, what can I do differently to feel more comfortable? What that might look like would be adding a snack before that meal to allow yourself to not get to that extreme on the hunger scale where you are so hungry. And then when you get to that point, you're so not likely to listen to your fullness. So that is why it's so common just to swing back and forth from those extremes. So ask yourself, what can I change? What can I adjust? What can I experiment with to allow myself to feel more comfortable. Maybe it's adding a snack. Maybe it's adding more carbs at a meal. That's something that takes a lot of experimentation. I always tell my clients to view everything as an experiment. Nothing is set in stone. You never have to keep doing anything for the rest of your life, but just give it a try. Try it on for size and see how it feels. So you can always make some adjustments there. And then as you do this experimentation, as you keep using the hunger scale, as you keep learning what those more middle area numbers are, you're going to start getting the hang of it. You're going to start understanding what's most comfortable to you, but sometimes the most difficult part for people is to just actually start using it. So pick one meal that you're going to start with, leave it in the comments, and I want to support you as you start using the hunger scale at that meal. I absolutely love seeing you guys really succeed with using the hunger scale because like I said, it is one of my favorite tools. Here's what one of my clients told me after she started using the hunger scale for just a couple of days. So she said, this was good. I asked myself if I was hungry and my answer a lot of the time was a little bit, but I'm not starving. Then it clicked. That being a little hungry was probably the best time to eat. You guys, she totally learned that allowing herself to get to that hanger point, probably not the best situation to be in because you're probably gonna overeat and not feel great. Love that she was able to really put that into play here and learn from that in just a couple of days of implementing it. So like I said, pick that one meal and start using it. By learning those middle ground numbers, you're less likely to get to the point of just swinging back and forth from feeling so hungry to the point where you're just tanked. Once you really start getting used to the hunger scale and actually practicing it, you're going to understand what makes you feel best and how to avoid those feelings of tanked and then always leading to that extreme feeling of being stuffed. You start to feel more comfortable as you use this because you're not just swinging back and forth between those extremes. So pick that meal, track those patterns, make adjustments, and keep doing that. As you do it, it'll become automatic. You guys, that's really it. It is that simple of a tool. It just takes practice and actual, like I said, it's a lot of that upfront energy to say, okay, I got to make sure where am I on the hunger scale before, where am I at on the hunger scale after. And like I said, it is your energy and you having to remember to do that. But as you do it, it gets way easier. And like I said, now it's just automatic for me. I don't even have to actually think about it. It's just kind of something I do on autopilot. Now let's talk about a couple caveats with the hunger scale. Sometimes you are going to eat when you are not hungry. That's normal, guys. Don't get frustrated about that or feel like a failure because you're eating when you're not hungry. One example I use is birthday parties. You may not be hungry for cake at that time, and that's okay, but you're still probably going to enjoy the cake because it is a celebration and you want to partake in that. Or, I mean, think about a bride and a groom at their wedding. They may not be actually hungry for cake at that point, but they're probably going to eat it because it is filling that kind of emotional need. Emotional eating is a whole other video that I'll definitely have to put on my list. Degrees of emotional eating is normal and that's an example of one. You may not be physically hungry at that point, but still allow yourself to eat when those things come along. Sometimes we use practical hunger. Again, another video that I'll definitely add to my list is 
practical hunger. So knowing what you need versus what your body is telling you right this second. For instance, before I shot this video, I wasn't really hungry for breakfast. I was like, I might be hungry halfway through recording this and I really don't want to stop. I'm going to make some breakfast where I'm not super duper hungry and that's okay to avoid having to stop and be super annoyed because my hunger cues kicked in halfway through and I had to stop. So I use that practical hunger. Don't worry about being perfect with this because nothing in life is perfect and that includes using the hunger scale. It's just a tool that you can utilize. You can utilize it when you want. And also, like I said, if you're having that birthday party and you want that cake, eat when you're not hungry. It's fine. So I hope you now have a good idea of what the hunger scale is and how to actually start using it today. The next video that I'm going to upload, I release videos every Sunday. And the next week is going to be a what I eat in a day video where I am actually gonna show you how I use the hunger scale at those times. It'll be a little bit more of a real life explanation of how to use the hunger scale. So be sure if you haven't yet hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. That will allow you to be notified when that video comes up because it's gonna be a good one, a really real life application of this video. And it really helps to support me, like I said, to create more videos for you guys and give you all of the tips on living life of no food rules. All right, gorgeous humans. I'll see you later. I don't know if I like this lipstick.